Hi, my name is Stephanie, and today we're going to be going over the executive function working memory. Before we get started, I do want to note that having issues with executive functioning is not exclusive to autism in any way. So working memory is considered to be one of the main executive functions. Working memory is defined in one paper as a cognitive system that allows us to maintain and manipulate information in mind for short periods of time to guide behavior. So when you hear of memory along with short periods of time, you might think, oh, short-term memory. You're not alone in immediately drawing that conclusion. Many sources actually use short-term memory and working memory interchangeably, even though this isn't technically correct. These are separate terms, though they do have overlap and the amount of overlap can be argued. The main difference here appears to be that with working memory, you have to use or manipulate that information that is in the short-term memory space, basically. Both short-term memory and working memory heavily use the dorsolateral part of your prefrontal cortex, if you're wanting to get very technical. <laughs> One way that researchers test working memory is through something called an N-back test. The N is a stand-in for any number. For example, one study uses a zero-back, a one-back, and a two-back test, which are called load levels. So in that example, there were three load levels. So the zero back test in this example required participants to left click whenever they saw a gray square show up in the left hand corner of the screen. The one back test required participants to click the left mouse button if the gray box appeared in the same place that it appeared in the previous time. And in the two back test, the participant would have to left click if they saw the gray square appear in the same place that it appeared two trials back. That part makes me nervous. I don't think I would pass. <laughs> so in other situations, for example, if the gray box didn't appear in the left hand corner, or if it wasn't the same as the last one, or wasn't the same as the one two times ago, they would right click. So this measures working memory because not only is it requiring you to keep that information from a short time ago, but you're also manipulating it or using it because you have to take that information and use it to evaluate against the current information that you're seeing. And so this is happening, of course, in trials that are pretty quick. It's going to be happening in a shorter span of time, but you do have to use it in, a, in an evaluative way. Working memory is required for doing mental math, which is something I am terrible at. <laughs> Those who have issues with working memory might have issues with verbal instructions because, of course, if you had them written down, you could refer back to them when you forgot. Verbally, obviously, it has to stay in your short-term memory and you need to be able to use that information to be able to follow a verbal instruction. You might have issues copying things down because you have to keep on looking back at the board to check that you had the right letters and then you can only remember so many letters or words and then you have to check your own thing and it's just a long process. <laughs> Those who struggle with this might also have difficulty with starting tasks that require multiple steps or lots of information or even writing original pieces because of losing train of thought. It might take a lot longer for someone to do that. Now, if you've been following my series on executive functions, you would know that the executive functions do intertwine and depend on each other and work with each other a lot. So remember that it's not really easy to completely parse out every single executive function as they kind of require the other ones to work or are important for other ones to work, etc. They kind of, they're very intermeshed. It's a system. This also means that sometimes it is going to be difficult to know exactly what executive function might be causing a problem that could be caused by multiple things. So for example, someone having issues with writing notes, they might be having an issue with working memory and that's why they're having trouble with that. Or it might be an issue with inhibition and attention because they're having a difficult time parsing out what the actual relevant and important information is to have written down. Regardless, I think 
that working memory is exactly why I hated some of these aspects during school. I'm lucky that during college I am typically allowed to record the audio so I can listen back and that way I don't have to worry about the type of notes or how fast I write things down. So how can we help with working memory issues? One way is likely something that you are probably familiar with already and that is called rehearsal. This is simply repeating the information to yourself over and over. Of course, things like managing distractions can be really helpful so that unnecessary information doesn't try to clog up your working memory space. This also includes trying to do too many things at once, which is usually a no-go for autistic people anyway. You can also use things like chunking, which is what people do with phone numbers, why they're separated into three, three, and four. That's a type of chunking. Also, mnemonic strategies can help with memorizing things or giving absurd acronyms to stuff. And another thing that you can do is try to connect these smaller things to bigger concepts to try to draw them out of just being stuck in a short-term area. But if you can connect it to something that's more relevant in the long term, you can kind of circumvent the need to rely so much on your working memory. For me, I like this because it kind of seems to move it into like a reasoning thing instead of just sitting in working memory. I hope that this video helped you understand a bit about working memory, what it might look like if you have issues with that or someone you know has issues with that, and some ways to help. I, as always, have my references available in the description box, so be sure to check those out for further information and maybe also some more tips. If you enjoyed this video or found it informational, interesting, or whatever else, go ahead and hit that like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you have issues with working memory? Are you amazing at mental math? I, sh I just want to know. Let me know <laughs> in the comments. If you're interested in videos about autism and autism-related things, from me, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I upload to this channel usually every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, except on the last Thursday of the month where I tried to go live with you all. Thank you to everyone who supports me here on YouTube as YouTube channel members, those who give through Ko-fi, my patrons on Patreon, and a special thank you to my spouse here patron, Philip Noah. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!